and I had homesickness. I had trouble with homesickness a lot, and that's what happens when, when you fear something and you fight it, it gives you a gift. It's as though it's it's like that. So I was fighting my fears during that time, and I had not a lot of people to talk to, and the ones that that I wanted to talk to, they thought I was going crazy or nuts or perhaps, you know, just, you know, yeah. Um, but these experiences of living alone and living in silence, I think I should make a three-year course for this and I should sell it <laughs> where I practice people to live in silence and uh, when they come out of it, it's completely new, you know, a uh, completely new being. It's like, so there are stages of change in a human being. So the first stage is the the child sees what's around them, what's around them, and they take you know tidbits of it, and then they make up something of themselves. And then when they get like eighteen and above, they see the the real world, they see the real life experiences, and then they kind of there's a there's a battle between who they thought they were and now who they have become in this real world. So imagination and reality is like fighting with each other. And when that happened, that that's a stage of change. Some people have a trouble some people have trouble fighting it, that change that happens. So if people if you have a lot of questions, I think, if you have a lot of questions and the, perhaps there are not the right answers right now. I think you're going through some sort of a change. The second thing that I wanted to talk about, which was the beauty of religion and the beauty of God. I mean, think about all the holidays that we'd miss if there were no festivals. <laughs> and festivals come as a gift from celebrate from the celebration of God so yeah at least you'd miss all the holidays but jokes apart I think it's one of the the most beautiful thing on planet earth um, the celebration and um, the festivals and the beauty and all of it I think it's very beautiful If you take a look at Macassie's drawing, I'm going to put the photo over here. And there's this thing written where um, the boy and the horse are lost in the forest. And the boy says to the horse, I can't see my way through. And the horse says, can you see the next step? And the boy says, yes, I can. The horse says, then just take that. Now, uh, it's, it's very, um, I think that's how life is um, in the most unconfident, in the most, in situations that shake us, that make us um, feel lost, I think. This is what we need to remind ourselves this, this is what we need to remind remind ourselves about, you know, that we got to take one step. We, we, we have to take... The, the important thing is the action rather than anything else. We got to take some sort of action against the difficulties. Why is, you know, the situation difficult or problematic in life? So... I mean, the price of progress is pain. Do not give up during those times when the problem is there. Do not, um, do not, do not say that. Oh, this is so tough. I, how can I? How will I do it? That's not the way to go about it. It should be like, okay, you know, um, okay. So there's a problem. I need to solve it. Human beings are problem solvers. And since time immemorial, if you, if you 
I mean, we can't live without a problem inside our head. If, otherwise, the brain starts creating problems. If you don't have a problem, the uh, yeah, the the brain will start to create some sort of a problem, even with even when you don't have any. So our mind is attuned to solving problems, and that's why human beings have proven themselves to be such great problem-solving beings, <laughs> um, if that makes any sense. Hi everyone. In today's video, we'd be talking about the power of aloneness, the, the rise of wisdom that comes with silence, with living in silence and dating apps <laughs> also yes uh, I wanted to talk about um, the beauty of religion and spirituality in this world and science okay so let's start the video yeah, let's start with the power of silence and aloneness. Um, <clears throat> okay, so basically, it's like when you spend a considerable amount of time alone, and yeah, my voice is recording. When you spend a considerable amount of time alone, and um, Things change. When you spend a considerable amount of time alone, things change and, you know, um, you start to see things in a different way than you could ever imagine. Your observation power, the way you notice certain things, um, the way you feel about something, I mean, you can listen to your heartbeat if you're all alone and there, there, there's no noise and, you know, the the heartbeat it thumbs here and here and here. Um, so yeah, thumping of the, the, the sound. Um, or maybe I was just going too, too, um, or maybe there was too much of silence there, I think. Um, but yeah, what I'm trying to say is that once you are introduced to silence, um, when there are less distractions, you get focused, obviously, and you're focused on two things that are of importance, that are important to you and the world around you. When you have no um, feeling of disgust for someone or you don't have a feeling you you have a bad inclination toward anything and everything around you it's kind of a purifying experience for you to delve into things that are of importance and once you start to live in silence so i spent three years in silence and then when i came out of it my mother couldn't recognize me because not because of the outer looks. The outer looks were fairly similar, but it's what happens inside you that changes everything. I, uh, in college, I went bald. I shaved my head. I think I can post a picture about that over here somewhere. So yeah, I shaved my head and I, I wanted to see where's this sort of attention coming from, this unwanted attention or the kind of attention that I got in college. I, I, st I was living alone at that time and there were a lot of questions that I, were, that I were asking. I think that was my first step toward critical thinking. So when I started critically thinking about things, I wanted to see what is it that people see? Is it the outer thing? And most probably it was the outer thing because I mean the way I dressed the way 
I chose to dress was was different to the trend to the way people were dressing at the time and um, yeah so so th- I thought it was the outer looks my long hair and I thought it was that I knew how insecure I was about myself at that time because I knew nothing about when I when I went in college I'm, I mean I I talked to my professors and I thought I knew nothing and I lit- I think I did not know much at all and so when I had the reality check there I was like okay so I've got a I was on a it was like a pilgrimage <laughs> going to college was like that where I had to you know take off you know like a snake uh, what what is it called? I'm not sure. It it takes off its skin. It's similar to that experience where you, you know. Um, so yeah, whatever. I what I did was. I thought yeah. So people were attracted to the outer outer side of me, not the inner side of me. So to test that, I shaved my head because now I had no inhibitions. Now I had no insecurity about. Why is it? Because I had already, you know, taken that. I mean, because a hair are a very beautiful thing, uh, uh, you know, to have on a human being. And so when I shaved my head, I went in, and I mean, I it it felt like I had, you know, taken a new birth. I I it there was like. It was it was all new. Uh, the experiences got richer and new, and I had taken. I didn't care about if my socks were, you know, um, torn like they are ra- now. I think they are. Yeah, they are. So my socks are always torn uh, from. So I I used to wear slippers sometimes to school, and most of the times I used to wear my boots. Um, even in summers, and they're the same same boots that I'm wearing right now, these ones. They're beautiful, by the way. So, thing was that when I took that outer shell, when I went in, I realized it was it was perhaps the inner me that people were attracted to, rather than the outside. And that made it, that made it worth it. I mean, that made it worth shaving my head, actually. But shaving your head is an experience, and I mean, I don't recommend it to anyone, but yeah, I mean, you no longer care about what people, you no longer care about the outer perception of people, you know, and it's it becomes, it was more like, you know, you kind of reconstruct yourself. So earlier, I couldn't talk properly. I I had very less knowledge of anything at all, like ideologies, philosophy, or um, I still don't know much of philosophy. Um, so yeah, I, it, th- th- there was a lot of learning in that experience. And I think it. if I have to point it towards something, it was me living alone. And I had homesickness. I had trouble with homesickness a lot. And that's what happens when when you fear something and you fight it, it gives you a gift. It's as though it's it's like that. So I was fighting my fears during that time. And I had not a lot of people to talk to. And the ones that, that I wanted to talk to, they thought I was going crazy or nuts or perhaps, you know, just... You know, yeah. Um, but these experiences of living alone and living in silence, I think I should make a three year course for this and I should sell it <laughs> where I practice people to live in silence. And uh, when they come out of it, it's completely new, you know, a uh, completely new being. It's like, so there are stages of change in a human being. So the first stage is the the child sees what's around them what's around them and they take you know tidbits of it 
and then they make up something of themselves and then when they get like 18 and above they see the the real world they see the real life experiences and then they kind of there's a there's a battle between who they thought they were and now who they have become in this real world so imagination and reality is like fighting with each other and when that happened that that's a stage of change some people have a trouble some people have trouble fighting it that change that happens so if people if you have a lot of questions i think if you have a lot of questions and the, perhaps there are not the right answers right now i think you're going through some sort of a change you know and yeah yeah so it, it's a part of change i mean yeah so uh, some sort of patience and calmness also comes when you are living in silence i mean it's i can totally attribute it to uh l- being alone and living in silence because when I, where i was living there was not a lot of noise it was far from roads and uh there was not a lot of noise i had no troubling neighbors who were making noises so it was always there was always less noise and that made the experience more unreal and when i came back when i started you know so what happens is let's say if you started to live alone when you go in society you will observe a lot because it feels like your head increases the the brain has it it feels like some doors open or or there's more empty space in your head when you're in silence and you can obs- observe a lot from people from what they're talking about and most of it could be nonsense but um there are some that from where you could get this rich knowledge and observation like from books or from some someone talking some someone you know uh a phd guy sitting in cannot place um you know uh, all by himself and selling something or you know just sitting there all alone by himself with torn clothes and you know in the disguise of a beggar or something like that so if you have those sort of rich experiences i mean yeah so that i'm looking at the recorder so so there's that the second thing that i wanted to talk about which was the beauty of religion and the beauty of god i mean think about all the holidays that we'd miss if there were no festivals <laughs> and festivals come as a gift from celebrate from the celebration of god so yeah at least you'd miss all the holidays but jokes apart i think it's one of the the most beautiful thing on planet earth um the celebration and um the festivals and the beauty and all of it i think it's very beautiful um yeah i mean think about it what would the the world be like if there was no god you know i mean i mean i i sh- um i don't want to talk about my personal idea about it or personal feeling about it because ideas can be what wrong and so on but a feeling is much more stronger than an idea it's an instinct and an impulse and so i have one and you know maybe i'm within god you know like this whole everything that the vastness the infinite vast space that we're surrounded by in itself is god and you know 
we are just a tiny bit of um, you know thing inside it breathing and being lucky enough to have a life so yeah um, but it's just a theory um, but there's more out there that could change the the whole idea of everything which are UFOs, the existence of UFOs, if that turns out to be true. I mean, um, yeah, so things could shake up a little bit. But if it does not, but there is credible evidence out there. There's credible, credible, I mean, if you if you take the example of Commander David Traver, uh, who is this U.S. commander, he was this pilot. Uh, there was this very um, interesting case of Tic Tac, where there there was these four pilots, and an object fell from plummeted to Earth from fifty thousand or eighty thousand feet to right above the sea level, like five feet above the sea level, and it was hovering around the sea and in 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 a in a non-linear motion in which completely defies the the our our physics our capability our air, aircraft's abilities to maneuver and that tic tac was maneuvering and so 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 differently and then the moment they were they were tracking it and then when they found it the ufo or UAP, uh, unidentified aerial phenomena. Yeah, so that realized that he was being watched, or whatever, um, um, he was being watched. And so it, it, it turned its nozzle or whatever around the aircraft, and it started, replic it started mimicking the actions of the, the, the pilot. Uh, Commander David Trevor, and it came right in front of um, the uh, the plane, and within a second, it just poof, it was gone. So we're talking about that sort of capability of um, UFO, and then then comes the theories about inter. So like wormholes, the creation of wormholes. There was this there was this clip of a plane flying. And then there were three UFOs circling it in a in a high speed, and then all of a sudden, in a blip, it was all gone. But don't trust the internet. Uh, I'm kind of excited about the UFO thing, and I have had done my research on that. Uh, perhaps I should make another video about it. Okay. So the next thing that I want to talk about, you see, yeah, religion and God. I I, I surely think that I am m more in connection with people who are more s on, on the spiritual side. Because I don't question God, I don't question the existence of God, but because I have a feeling about it, and my instinct, I can't not trust my instinct about certain things, and this is a very high instinct, you know, that perhaps... Right, but whatever I'm surrounded by, if you take at if you take at the look, if you take a look at the forest, or if you go out in nature, I mean, gosh, it's it's a very beautiful experience. If you know you can travel a lot, I mean, if you, it's it's a very beautiful experience to just take off your shoes and then you know put your feet on the sand. I mean, it's it's and then in water, and that's all nature. That's not that's not man-made. Um, it's beautiful, and uh, to just look up at the sky. I mean, almost every night, because I have the space for it, so I go outside and then I look at the sky. It's all clear without much lights, and then in that vastness of that space, I can see the stars and they all. Shine bright, and that's that's more of a mystical ex experience. I mean, how? I mean, the I can look at the stars. 
So that's that's just very beautiful. That's a very very beautiful experience to have, and yeah, I. Uh, that's this experience is God, I think. <laughs> mm. Now let's talk about something that modern world and the dating apps. It's such a huge transition from God and religion to dating apps. But I'm. What can I do? My mind works in. My mind works in. Yeah, my mind works this way. I mean, yeah. So, I've seen that, I mean, like I said, you can't really trust people on the internet, or, I mean, so I know that the society is becoming more and more isolated, and there's more you know it's 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 sort of it's it's sort of clubbing it's it's like there is community for everything there is um you know separation in society um and these um dating apps i think uh, you know when you meet someone in these dating apps and then it turns out to be this great experience in the starting and then they show their true colors who they really were when you are in such places you got to be very careful of what you are heading into what you are going for and what you're looking for I mean if it's just for desperation and getting laid you just go there do that you know but if you are on let's say if you're trying to find something pure and something something you know something that you can trust i don't think that these are the places where you should this is more for casual fun that sort of a, that this this um uh it's for people who want to sleep with people that's all I can say and there's nothing more than that uh, it's just for that I think it's just for that and I mean if you're lucky if you found someone who's who you can trust who you know hasn't slept with a lot of people or you know um, who don't cheat or who don't, who are not there for your money or who are not there because what you can provide for them or if you can good them a, give them a good uh, experience of you know buying things for them or whatever if you're there if you're there just for love don't go there never go there I mean if it's for that and these sites are making money I mean I've seen that you can only like these many amount of people and I know a lot of men swipe a lot of girls right um, just to get laid and then when that happens um, the the app you know if you want more if you want more swipes you gotta pay us this amount or if you want your profile to appear there there that whatever so it's a money-making machine and it's tricking you into believing that you'll find the the love of your life and you know you'll have a happy life I would say I would suggest that you focus more on yourself rather than so it was very it was a very fast understanding when I was there in these on, on the site that it's not something that I would you know yeah so I think uh, I think I've made it clear already um, so yeah if you you be with someone who loves you not someone who loves to be with you because you can provide for them not because you know for don't be with people people who are there in your life because for all the things that you can do for them 
so you sh- you should have clarity on that and um yeah yeah it's it's very important that one grows this sense of you know trying to make yourself better make yourself more work on work on yourself and you know and that i mean there's there's it's not like there are not good people out there there are maybe in these dating apps as well but the majority of them is less in these dating apps i'm pretty sure about that all right i'll see you in the next video and let's uh Let's help truth win in today's society. Yeah. See ya.